So, you have a deal. Now you have to send out an executive summary to your investors to get them on board. The only question is, what makes a good executive summary? Or better yet, what is an executive summary? So if you're looking for those answers and you've come to the right place. In this video, we'll go through what makes a good executive summary for real estate, the do's and don'ts, and even an example of a summary I've used to raise millions of dollars for my own deals. And don't forget, if you find the information valuable or helpful, please like and subscribe if you so choose. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to it. So, what is an executive summary? Well, for real estate investors, an executive summary is basically a quick, simple snapshot of your deal. It's used specifically to give a potential investor just enough information to decide if they either want to know more about the deal or if it's just not for them. If they do want to know more, that's when you should send them the complete summary or pitch deck, which we'll go over in another video. So for your executive summary, here are a few points to follow. So number one, keep it simple. Don't bombard them with your full pitch deck or a full summary of the deal right off the bat. You don't want to confuse them or give them too much information at first. You're just trying to give them a little bit of information about the deal to let them think, hmm, yeah, I want to know more or not. So make it one to three pages max. People are busy. They don't have time to sit through 20 pages right off the bat. That's when they want to dig deep next level. All right, just remember, when you're sending out information about your deal, confuse minds say no. Number two, know your numbers. Run through the various scenarios and know these numbers inside and out, off by heart. You should be able to ramble them off in your sleep. See, interested investors will have a follow-up conversation with you. If they like what they see in executive summary, they're gonna reach out and they're gonna have some questions before you actually send them the full pitch deck or full deal summary. So they're gonna have follow-up conversations, follow-up questions, and you better know these numbers or your deal is dead in the water. It does a few things here. Knowing your numbers instills a lot of confidence in your deal, instills a lot of confidence in you as the manager of the deal, and it gets them one step closer to investing and joining with you as a joint venture partner or private lender. So that's very important. Know your numbers. Number three is don't take it personally. Thank them for having a look at the deal. That's a big show of confidence in and of itself. They took the time to review the deal and live through this. That means if it's 10% or 100%, there's some possibility and some potential of them investing in a deal with you. It means they're interested. So don't take it personally. It's just not for them. It's not exactly the type of deal that they're looking for fit their investment criteria just say thank you and then move on and you do want to move on because basically it is a numbers game they're not all going to say yes immediately when they receive the executive summary all right and most importantly once you've closed or sold on a deal let them know it gets them eager to invest as a joint venture partner in your next project if you flip the house you renovate sold it made a profit with your other joint venture partner or partners, let them know. It makes them eager for the next one. If you bought an apartment building with other joint venture partners and that building is now a success and it's running well, let them know. Again, it makes them eager and it makes them want to listen to and pay attention to the next deal you send their way and it comes across their desk, they're gonna be, hey, I better pay attention to this one. I don't wanna miss out again, all right? Just remember one important key in all of this. The fortune is in the follow-up. So to recap, keep it simple, know your numbers, and don't take it personally. And there you have it, simple points for your next executive summary that will help you lock in your next investor. And don't forget, if you need help with your own executive summary, or if you want an example of the executive summary that I use for all of my deals, comment below and I'll send you a template that you can edit and make your own. And I'm sure you'll find as much success with it as I have. So best of luck, happy investing.